Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to continue to talk on this text, opening the hand of thought. Uh, today I'd like to talk on uh, two paragraphs from uh, the bottom of page 127, if you have this book. Uh, let me read these two paragraphs. <clears throat> One might reason that it may well be possible to be one true self, that is only true self, during the Zen, when we can put down our work and discontinue communicating and associating with other people, but that it is, uh, but that it is impossible to be that self in our daily lives with other people and the outside world existing right in front of us. Next paragraph. But it isn't a matter of becoming just universal self by means of some special device whereby we erase all the other people who are before us. Rather, the reality of life is that we are always living out the true self that is only the true self, just as during the Zen. Uh, in this section, he is talking about, uh, he means Uchiyamaroshi, uh, talking about magnanimous mind or Daishin. That is one of the three minds that that is Dai Shin, Lo Shin, and Qi Shin. Uh, Dai Shin is Dai big or magnanimous, and mind or heart, and Lo is old, aging, or matured, matured mind or heart. And the key is joyful mind. And those are called sanshin. That is the name of this temple and this community. And uh, <coughs> This sanshin is mentioned by Dogen Zenji in Tendo Kyokun at the final part of Tendo Kyokun. And uh, he, he talked about Zazen practice, the, uh, how we sit, and what is the meaning of this Zazen practice. And he said this Zazen practice from one side, that is, uh, practice of Bodhisattva Bhav, and from another side, this is a practice of repentance. So, it's the, this is not half and half, but uh, our, this sitting is uh, from one perspective, entire sitting. This is entirely a practice of Bodhisattva Bhav, and from another perspective, this is the practice of uh, repentance. And, and uh, so he said uh, his uh, exp very unique expression is Ichi the Nikyo and Sanshi. This is an expression which Amaros used 
in uh, the final lecture or final session at Antaiji, right, right before he uh, retired from Antaiji. And this is uh, kind of a summary of his understanding of Buddha Dharma and also uh, his uh, practice and teaching. So this is almost, to me, almost like uh, my teacher's uh, uh, final teaching, that is like a will. Anyway, this one, it is, I mean, one sitting, our uh, sitting, as in, is Nigyo means two practices, those two are Bodhisattva uh, bow, bow and repentance. And uh, this Zazen and uh, practice of bow and repentance can or should function in our daily lives as three mind, sanshi. So these uh, are not three separate things. <coughs> But this is a uh, one uh, practice. And uh, he talked about sitting and uh, practice of bow and repentance. And now he started to speak about sanshin, three minds. And the first, uh, in Tendo Kyokun, Dogen talks from uh, joyful mind and uh, uh, parental mind and uh, magnanimous mind but Uchan Roshi always talk from opposite order and I, I think it makes sense and now he is talking about uh, start to talk about the first one magnanimous mind This is uh, the mind or heart, our attitude, uh, on the basis of interdependent origination. And, uh, you know, there's nothing that is not me. Uh, well, uh, during last Genzoe, I talked about uh, one saying by Sekito Kisen or Shito in Chinese. Uh, he is uh, one ancestor uh, in our lineage and he is famous for his uh, long poem entitled San San Do Kai. San is difference and Do is unity and Kai is emerging. So merging of difference and unity is one translation in English. And what Sekito said uh, is uh, he talks about a sage or a sage that is a sage or a sacred person. Uh, he says, Sekito said, sacred person has no self. Sacred person has no self. Therefore, there is nothing which is not the person. Does that make sense? Uh, that is a kind of a origin of my, you know, expression or my formula of structure of the self. That is. 1 equal 0 equal, equal infinity. 1 means as a person, <coughs> uh, as a par, uh, individual karmic person, I am 1. And this 1 uh, is uh, different from, or opposite and different from other. I'm not you, you are not me. But when we take a close look at this, there's no or such thing called a self-fixed uh, entity that can exist without relation with others. Uh, that is what uh, no self or emptiness means. And when we see, you know, 
uh, there is no such uh, fixed self, fixed individual, individual or independent, independent self. Then we, we start to see interconnectedness. Uh, you know, this body is a collection of billions of cells, and uh, this can this uh, body can exist only uh, through the support of air, water, and all other elements. And actually, beside that, there's no body. And uh, our mind is also the same. You know, what I'm thinking now is based on what I learned or what I experienced. So those are my uh, way of thinking. So my way of thinking is not really uh, this person's position. There's no such thing. So if I study something new, you know, I may change my thinking. So uh, everything is coming and going and nothing uh, is fixed. Then those we are this one self and no self can exist only within the interconnection or relation with all other beings. And I always say, you know, we are part of this indoor net. And look, it looks individual. And yet, this is only a knot of different thread. That is fact. So there's no fixed thing. But all there is is a thread, all different kind of elements. And uh, so that is what no self means. And yet when we see uh, you know individual being is not really existing, then we start to see interconnectedness. We are interconnected with all beings within this network. And uh, uh, you know when as when I touch one not, I touch the entire net. So actually, uh, this is uh, uh, this is really interconnected with entire network. That is what uh, you know. There's nothing that is not the person. This is the very I call this a structure of the self, and uh, in. Um, Buddhist teaching, even in Shakyamuni's teaching, the, this, these three aspects are there. And we have to see the reality of this uh, structure of the self, how we are, what is this self is like. And what <coughs> uh, uh, is saying in the first paragraph is, uh, no, uh, previous paragraph I talked uh, last month. Uh, I talked about uh, Jin, Dogen's expression, Jin Issai Jiko. Actually, this is uh, taken from Dogen Zenji's uh, expression. Uh, appeared in Shobo Genzo, Yui Butsu, Yo Butsu, only Buddha, together with Buddha. That means Jin means entire or whole or total, and Issai is everything. Uh, so, entire everything, everything actually, entirety of all beings is the self. So there's nothing that is not me. So Uchiyamoroshi is talking, uh, when Sekito says it's only about the person, sacred person or enlightened person who are completely free from self-clinging. But Uchiyamoroshi is talking about 
you know, this is the structure of all beings. It's not only enlightened person, but all of us existing as one in a uh, social uh, person, in a society. And yet there's no such uh, dependent, in, uh, independent thing. And yet we are connected with all beings. So there are those three things. That is what uh, Uchiamuro said in the previous paragraph, and I talked last month. <coughs> but uh, in this paragraph, he, is, uh, he raised a question. We can be together uh, with all beings, and this entire network is me, you know, uh, only in the Zen. When we sit, facing the wall in the quiet gentle and letting go of our thought. Thought it came from our karma. And when we open our hand, you know, at least while we are sitting in this way, you know, I am free from individuality. That means our karma. So uh, the question means, uh, you know, when we sit and letting go of thought, there's no object. There's no object means there's no separation between subject and object. Even when we sit and keep our eyes open facing the wall, you know, we, we can see the wall, but we don't think wall is an object of this person sitting. Or sometimes we hear the birds singing, bird song, but we don't think uh, I am hearing the bird song. I am sitting and birds are singing. So there is no relation as subject and object. It, in that case, we can say, you know, there is no self. We are free from uh, karmic self. Therefore, we can say we can run together with all beings. But uh, this question means, what about when we stand up from sitting and get out of the zendo? Uh, you know, actually, uh, there are the subject and object. And it's dangerous if we don't think about the meaning of the color of the traffic signal. And so we have to make uh, distinction and make choice uh, what that message means or what the person is saying or what uh, I have to do here and now. In that case, there is actually self and others. Uh, how is it possible to say even uh, in our daily lives in which uh, we have to work together with other beings as a person, that uh, as, um, as individual beings, in this in such condition, I mean, that is uh, uh, all the time, except we are sitting in the window. You know, uh, we live as a person, as one person, individual person, that is different from others. So there is interaction between self and others. In that case, uh, we can also say uh, we are the world. We are the entirety of uh, interconnectedness, or not. Or we have to say, you know, when we are interacting with others, there's a separation between me and others. If so, uh, you know, this can be said only in our Zazen practice. That is. Uh, <coughs> what this uh, paragraph says, and Uchiyamaroshi, what Uchiyamaro said in the second paragraph is not only, f not only when we sit in the zendo, but whatever we do, uh, we are uh, doing, living our life in this structure. And he used, uh, he, in this text, he almost too often 
is this kind of this strange or unusual expression that is Kiri is uh, this, or this kanji or this kanji. And this kanji means to cut off. And this uh, kanji gen means limited or limitation. That means uh, this kiri means only. So the self, that is only the self. That is the original expression. Though which I'm, in this translation, which I'm, uh, or this translation says, uh, true self, that is only true self. Uh, actually, in the original, there's no true, but it says, self, that is only the <coughs> self. And in the second paragraph, he also said, uh, we are always living out the true self that is only the true self. So, uh, to me, you know, this jiko giri no jiko or the self that is only self uh, is a very difficult expression to understand. It sounds like, <clears throat> you know, as, as one, as individual beings, and if we cut off, when we cut off all the relation with others, then this is self that is only the self. So when we cut the relation with others, that that jiko giri no jiko sound like that. That means when we sit in the zendo facing the world, there's no subject. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, object. When there's no object, subject also disappears. You know, this, uh, in this sitting, we can say this is the self that is only the self without any relation or interaction with others. But Uchamoroshi is saying uh, we can be jiko giri no jiko, the self that is only the self, uh, even when we are not sitting or even when we are working together with others. So uh, it's really difficult. To me, for many years, I don't really clearly understand what this means, this Japanese expression means. <coughs> so, uh, it, and I found this jiko giri no jiko can mean two, two things. One is uh, uh, only self, that is uh, uh, separate with all other beings or people without any interaction. Uh, such as sitting in the uh, zendo or going to the deep mountain and sit, uh, live ourselves. So there's no interaction with others. But another meaning I found, no, I started to understand is this self, that is only the self, means uh, exactly this, this entirety. If this is the self, if this ent uh, entire network of interdependent origination is the self, you know, that in, in this self all other beings are included. That's why Uchamoroshi could say, uh, you know, there's nothing but uh, our self. So, jiko giri no jiko can mean two opposite things. One is kind of isolated self without relating with uh, other beings. 
and another is uh, you know if we uh, live together with all beings, then there's not, nothing but me, and that can also called self that is only the self. And Uchamuro uses uh, uh, this expression, he referred to this self interpenetrated or, or as one with all beings, so there are no others. I have a question. Please. I believe that sometimes in this book, mm -hmm. the term universal self mm -hmm. is used to mm -hmm. mean interconnectedness mm -hmm. of everything. Is that correct? Uh, uh, yes. Uchamuro uh, not Uchamuroshi, another expression Uchamuroshi use is uh, not Uchamuroshi from Sawakiroshi, uh, Tenchi Pai no Jiko means uh, the self that is one with entire heaven and earth. Or uh, instead of heaven and earth, uh, he used uh, universe, one with universe, entire universe. So all those things, word, uh, expression, refer to the same thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that self that you just talked about from mm -hmm. Suwaki Roshi mm -hmm. could be the same self that is we're using the word Jiko for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, this entirety is Jiko, uh -huh. but one from one. Uh, perspective, this is an uh, individual person in the society. Yeah. I have to, uh, as a Shoha Kokumura, I have to function as a Buddhist priest. And uh, what I'm doing is kind of different from what other priests are doing. Mm. So I'm a kind of unique person. But when we take a close look at this person, there's no such thing as called Shoha or a Buddhist priest. And yet, all these are connected with entire being. So, uh, if we take uh, only with too much, if we put too much emphasis on uh, any one of these three, then we miss the Dharma. Mm. So, we have to always see <coughs> these three from those three perspectives. Otherwise, we become uh, how can I say? Uh, Ego centered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, I have to, in order to be functional in the society, I need to have at least some confidence that what I'm doing is at least meaningful for some people. And to do so, I have to study and make effort to be. Uh, uh, not so bad teacher, <laughs> even though it's not so good. At least I should not be too bad. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I cannot live in the society. So to be function, to me, I have, I need to have kind of a self identity. I am a Buddhist priest. Therefore, I have to understand uh, certain. Uh, you know, the Buddha, 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 Buddha's teaching, and I need to have certain amount of uh, knowledge and uh, in order to work in this country, somehow I have to speak in English. That is uh, what I am doing, and I need to have uh, uh, confidence that uh, you know, I can do it. And what I'm doing is not so meaningless, <laughs> not so meaningless. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this aspect of one is important. But if we think, if we, I have too much confident, confidence, then I became, uh, what is the word, uh, self-pride mm -hmm. or uh, arrogant. Mm -hmm. So I am the best teacher. That kind of you know problem happens, but if we, we 
only put too much emphasis on zero or empty self, then uh, I start to think why I have to make effort because this is not, nothing anyway. <coughs> you know, we, we, I, we can just you know live as far as you know my life continues. I find this life to be uh, need to be meaningful. Or why I have to say this is my you know mission or my practice or this is the teaching I'd like to share with others. You know, if we put too much emphasis on zero or emptiness, as, as Nagarjuna said, emptiness can be uh, a medicine when we attach to ourselves. But if we attach ourselves to emptiness, that is much more difficult poison or sickness to heal. There's no, no medicine to heal the sickness of emptiness. So uh, it's important to see the emptiness of the self, individual self. But uh, we should not uh, uh, to attach ourselves to emptiness. Also, when we to, we only see interconnectedness or infinity without seeing these element or perspective, then you know we become so too much so too much optimistic, everything is together with everything, so uh, you know, this is 100% okay. So that means I don't need to make my effort, my personal effort. Everything is already perfectly uh, designed uh, within this you know, uh, interconnectedness. Everything is fine, so I don't need to make effort. So, uh, to see our life from those three perspectives, I think is really important. And what uh, Ujjamaraj said uh, about vow and repentance, uh, f when I see from my personal, uh, as an individual being, uh, you know, to work for this uh, universal self, to express or manifest this universal self, not to be individual, uh, centered is a Bodhisattva vow. And when uh, we see from uh, this pers perspective to uh, as a karmic person as this, you know, uh, what I'm doing is always incomplete, never 100 percent, you know, uh, fulfilled our vow. Therefore, we need to have dependence. So within this structure, uh, we try to uh, walk toward that direction. And yet, we are always imperfect, imperfect, incomplete, and perfect, not perfect. Therefore, we make repentance and try to uh, take another step toward that uh, direction. That is, uh, you know, Ujjam Roshi's idea, you know, uh, our practice is vow and repentance always together. Uh, it makes sense within this structure, please. Um, so then, remember the one of the first things you diagrammed for us mm -hmm. was the three minds of sanction, mm -hmm. and mature was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, is it that the idea is that a mature mind understands these three perspectives of oneself? Uh, I think. Uh, Magnanimous mind, mind uh, see uh, all those three. Uh, but matured mind is as a person 
who is mature and fully understand this structure can be, uh, Dogen said, this matured mind or low shin is a parental mind. Yeah. That is mind yeah. of parent. You know, when we are a kid, yeah. we always want something and ask other people to help me or give me uh -huh. something. But when we uh, become mature, especially a parent, uh, we try to help others, try to protect and help uh, our children. Okay. That is the low sin or matured or uh -huh. parental mind. Yeah. The mind to uh, offer something, help others. Okay. Then the uh, yeah. So repentance coming from the universal mind, looking at the individual yeah. separate from yeah. others. It would seem to me that one of the responses of the universal mm -hmm. mind towards the individual mm -hmm. would be compassion. Yeah, Understood. this is, so the second, the low shin, or parental mind, or mature uh, mind, uh, 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 we need to have compassion even to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, uh, in the karmic self is like a, like a baby. Yeah. Always crying, always want to <laughs> have something. Always upset. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we always have a question whether what I'm doing is uh, really enough or meaningful. Yeah. Well, so we need to have a compassionate heart even to ourselves and to others. This is why I'm curious that the word repentance is being used. Uh, uh, what's the relationship between repentance and compassion? Well, I'm not sure about the English word repentance. Uh -huh. Uh. But uh, repentance, to me, in this word repentance uh. is a, a translation of a Buddhist term called Sangye. And Sangye is a, a <coughs> actually when uh, in the end of 19th century, uh, when Japanese uh, scholars try to find a Japanese equivalent of repentance, they use English, not a Buddhist term, Sangye. Yeah. So to me, repentance is only uh, translation of this word Sangye. So Sangye, and Sangye as a Buddhist practice and repentance, uh, in, especially in Christianity, uh -huh. might be different. Yeah. I often, I mean, many American people ask, what is the painters? <laughs> it seems they don't like it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, practice of the painters in Buddhism, mm. it's very old, even from mm. the time of Shakyamuni. Mm. You know, for, uh, this is what I say uh, almost every year in July during precept uh, retreat. Uh, Sangye in Buddhist uh, tradition means uh, when uh, people wanted to become a monk, mm. they have to receive uh, 250 precepts. That means they commit themselves, commit to keep these precepts. Uh, 250 is a number of the precepts for male monk, and for female monk there are more. And there are different set of the precepts for <coughs> lay people that has a uh, ten or five precepts. Mm -hmm. And to become a Buddha student or Buddha disciple means to uh, take a vow to keep these precepts as the guideline or uh, guidance of our daily lives. And uh, they had a gathering in India uh, twice a month, uh, New Moon Day and uh, Full Moon Day. That is the beginning uh, of the month and uh, middle or 15th of the month. And the gathering was called uh, Uposata. In that gathering, 
you know, the leader of the Sangha recite all of these uh, precepts. And if a member of the Sangha think they did something against the precept, they have to uh, speak up. And depending upon the uh, seriousness of the mistake, they need to receive some penalty. So this is the origin of the Buddhist uh, practice of Sangha or repentance. Mm. That means uh, I made a, a commitment and yet I did something against that commitment. Mm. So I regret and I say I will not I do the same mistake again. So uh, in this practice of repentance in Buddhism, uh, it's about the self, about ourselves. What we want to do and what we do are different. Mm -hmm. Then we make repentance, regret, mm -hmm. and our reflection and try to return to the uh, uh, right track. So it's only uh, about me and my vow or commitment. But in Christianity, somehow, dependence is, is in relation with person and the God. That is, that is a difference. So when we make some commitment, and if I don't do it, then the problem is in here. So I have to continue our vow. That is our practice of repentance. And so, uh, <coughs> As I said, uh, as a karmic individual being, try to live, uh, to express this entirety or, uh, as an uh, uh, infinity, infinite uh, life force, instead of my personal desire. That is a bodhisattva vow, being the numberless, we vow to save them. Uh, or other three. But if we do uh, something different or something opposite, then you know we have to uh, renew our vow and return to that uh, direction we need to or we, we want to walk. That, so this, uh, in my expression, this awakening or awareness of, uh, of deviation from the right track is repentance. And the power of repentance allows us to return to the right track. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is my understanding of, so bow is to walk our uh, determination to walk even one step at a time toward that direction. And repentance is uh, when we see from this side what we are doing is still too much ego-centered. Mm -hmm. Or even though I'm trying to do things, here now I'm talking about this text, uh, this is kind of, in my mind, this is a kind of offering. And this is part of my vow to transmit the Dharma from Japan to this country or to the West, but still by you know, talk, giving this talk, I receive salary, receive, receive salary income. Oh, uh -huh. So yeah. this, what I'm doing now, is not 100% offering, oh. but uh, I am doing this because uh, that benefits me yeah. and my family. So uh, when we see from this side, you know, even though this, I hope this is offering, but this, of, uh, from this eye, they show some benefit. Then we have to uh, uh, repent, or how still we need to be ego-centered, self-centered, as a, you know, 
as a boy satwa, we need, as I always said, we need to work in sansara. And to work in sansara, we need uh, egocentricness mm. to protect. Even if I don't protect myself and keep our body and mind healthy and strong enough, I cannot serve. So, uh, as a boy satwa who is working in the sansara, uh, that means we are still uh, ordinary, ordinary living beings. So uh, we have both uh, Bodhisattva vow and karma. You know, the definition of Bodhisattva is the person who is led by Bodhisattva vow. And the definition of ordinary living beings is being uh, moved by karma. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need both as a person who work in sansara. As a boy sattva, we need we try to be led by karma. But still we need uh, support our, by vow. We try to do things by as a, as a, uh, as my vow. Mm -hmm. But still I need karma, I need to support my karma. Mm -hmm. So both should need to be there. <coughs> and to take care of both sides, we need uh, vow and repentance. Mm -hmm. I think that is what uh, Uchiyamurash meant when he said our Zazen is from one perspective. This is a practice of Bodhisattva vow mm -hmm. to save all beings and to be free from uh, self-centeredness. But even to pra keep practicing Zazen, I have to you know, take care of this body, this karmic body and mind. <coughs> <coughs> so, uh, to do so, you know, somehow, I, I, in a sense, I need to put uh, priority to take care of this body and mind and my family and my temple instead of other people or other Zen centers. Mm. So uh, some degree of self-centeredness I think is necessary. Mm. So that is what Uchamurashi meant, you know. If we think I simply think I'm just living by vow, then that is a kind of delusion. Uh, as a reality or actuality, I'm also living as a karmic person and I have to support my karma in a healthy way. Please? So we have two selves. One is sort of the original divine self and then we have another mundane self to take care of the vessel. So we need to disconnect from the mundane self to connect with the divine self. Sometimes, sometimes they go together and sometimes you have to separate them. That's sort of what I'm understanding. What Uchiyamurashi is saying is these two are not two separate things, but both are 100%. Does it make sense? May okay, I, okay may please. I add, <laughs> please. He used the term perspective mm -hmm. so that those three things there, where you said one is our mundane self, you're mm -hmm. calling it. Right? The middle one, he drew a zero. It's the original self. Well, no self. No self. That's no, no self. <laughs> where we realize that we have no continuing fixed self. Well, that's like the connecting with everything, dissolving into the universe. Or that's the third one. Yes. The yeah. But even to <coughs> talk about it, we have three circles there. True. Yeah. Impossible to talk yeah, about. Yeah. As a concept, we need to make these three or two. But an uh, important point is these two are not two separate things, but both are 100% or about this life. So well, from one perspective, uh, mm -hmm. this person mm -hmm. is 100% individual. 
And from another perspective, there's no such individual person, but we are part of this entire team. But we are all given individual vessels, bodies that make us do things that we have to take care of. Yes. Makes us have you know, sin or deep compassion. Yeah. And that's this, you know, my body is separate than his body right now. Uh, so, what? Uh, in Buddhist expression, what I'm talking about, not two and not one. Mm. Neither one <coughs> nor two. That is another expression of middle way. Mm. Neither individual nor, uh, in, how can I say, uh, infinity. But both are there. It's kind of a strange thing, but that is uh, what the middle way means. You know, one expression about the emptiness is the middle way between U and Mu, is being and non-being, and being and non-being negate each other, and yet as a middle way they are both there. You know, it's really strange logic. In Turkey, they say mm. we live like a tree, single and free, mm. and we live like a forest in brotherhood. Mm. So you always strive to be a single tree, but within the forest connected. Yeah, that is fact. I think uh, this teaching is trying to uh, show us. You know, we cannot live as an individual. But we have to take care of individual beings. So, you know, we are an independent tree, and yet there's no such independent tree beside the forest, the entire forest. Okay. Okay, please. When you were talking about the three perspectives uh -huh. and how it's dangerous to emphasize any one, mm -hmm. and you talked about the third one, mm -hmm. the, seeing the self from a perspective mm -hmm. of interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. And you said, we might be tempted to emphasize that because we would think it's a perfect mm -hmm. design, everything is fine. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that being aware of, you know, trying to broaden my view mm -hmm. so that I'm thinking about <clears throat> other beings and other countries, mm -hmm. our own country, mm -hmm. disasters, murder, yeah. um, violence, all kinds of bad things. You know, when we only see university, universality and oneness, then we forget, you know, in, within, even within ourselves or with any uh, uh, groups or country or mm. a family, there are too many problems. Right. But we ignore that, that kind of uh, conflict or problems and we only see you know, this is a perfect world. Uh -huh. well, and that is, I think, uh, Fat Dogen had a question when he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. when uh, you know, Mahayana Buddha said everything is, uh, you know, Buddha nature. So mm -hmm. everything is perfect as it is. Mm -hmm. Then why we have to practice? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm still having a problem. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> it, maybe it's just that I haven't really experienced mm. this interconnected mm. self. Mm. I believe in it, mm -hmm. you know, intellectually. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. I'm connected to mm -hmm. everyone in China, mm -hmm. and I'm connected to people who murder, even mm -hmm. though I have never done that and don't think I ever will. Mm -hmm. um, but because I have no ex real actual experience of that, mm -hmm loss of my individual self, mm -hmm. then it's hard for me to say this interconnectedness is a positive thing, 
completely. I see it as positive and negative, both at the same time. I think so. If we ignore the individuality and uh, uh, you know each problems, mm -hmm. and we only say everything is interconnected, mm -hmm. so that everything is okay. But it so <laughs> so it is not this interconnectedness is can be negative, but our attitude toward individuality and emptiness and uh, interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. If I have some, you know, uh, attachment or attachment to either any of them mm -hmm. or ignore any of them, mm -hmm. then our life become, uh, how can I say, not so healthy. Mm -hmm. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, that, you know, interconnectedness is uh, negative. Of course, negative things happen because interconnectedness, mm -hmm. like uh, some kind of sickness, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is uh, spread because we are interconnected, mm -hmm. or even some kind of uh, crazy things, uh, you know, happens because of we are because we are interconnected. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Well, it's already eleven fifteen. <laughs> Please. Uh, one small thing. I, um, I've been sitting with this all year long, mm -hmm. and it's been quite joyful mm -hmm. <laughs> in many different aspects. I'm still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But you made it. Um, I've got so many comments to make, mm -hmm. I would love to make, but I'll just say this. Um, you basically said that, you know, you have being and you have not being, but they're still together, mm -hmm. um, together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of Uchama Roshi's last poem. Mm -hmm. um, it's been in the background of my head to all of this. Mm -hmm. There's one line, um, if I remember it right, um, thou is life becomes life. Mm -hmm. Outright, it, it, that that just seems to be a very nice poetic way mm -hmm. to say what we had just been saying. I think so. So our practice is continuous as far as we are uh, alive. You know, this individual beings make uh, his the word he uses prayer in order to uh, these two become one. So uh, these two, if they are, these two are simply one, you know, there's no prayer necessary. But prayer and seigan or vow can be the same in this case. So we try to these two uh, try to live. Uh, this to my life, my personal life, as a universal life. Mm -hmm. But still there's a, a separation or gap. And so our vow or prayer is how can this uh, individual karmic beings can express this universal mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. And as far as uh, we are living as an individual, there's no uh, goal. So we, our life, no, our practice continue until the end of our life. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for listening.